All right, so today's project is trying to get the lowers up. So we've got them all laid out now, and we're gonna be trying to install the lowers. So the key thing is to get them exactly perpendicular to the bar so when they slide, they don't go to the left or the right and hit the sides. So I'll be trying to do that today, trying to straighten it out. mounted um, it's just loose in there right now so we're gonna try to square it all up see if we can get it to go square all right all the slats are now parallel so they're all bolted in and tight so we should be able to start wiring now and start thinking about where we're gonna put in the box and where we're gonna put in all the electrical so that's what's coming up next all right today we start planning and thinking about how we're going to wire our solar panels on the roof of the bus and so we've got our rack installed we've got everything set and ready so now we're ready to start thinking about how are we going to wire this thing and in all honesty we've already thought about this obviously but we'll explain that to you um, how we came about these numbers and these configurations and things like that so what we've got on the roof is eight uh, SunPower E20 435 watt solar panels. So they are rated for a VOC of 85.6 and a short circuit amperage of 6.43. So if you do the math on that, it actually comes out to 550 watts and that's because these are the numbers that are the maximums that these things will ever see. So once you put a load on them, the voltage drops, the amperage drops, and so they then have a rated amps and a rated voltage. The rated amps are 72.9, the rated amperage is 5.97. Now the reason those other two numbers are important is because you have to use those when you plan this out. So let's say our charge controller it's only rated for, our, our charge controller is rated for 100 and, no, 250 volts. But the one we had before was only rated for 150, and we thought, well, since it's only 72.9, you know, if we have two of those in series, that's still less than 150, but no. We called the Victron support guy, and he was like, that is not how it works. You have to use the... Um, the, the bigger number, which is 85.6, which is over 150, so we had to go to the next one up, which is the 250. Anyway, all that to say is these are the considerations we have to take into account when doing our wiring and doing all that stuff. So um, we have eight panels that are going to go on the roof, and we've decided to wire them two in series. So every, every two will be in series, so there'll be four of those sets, and then those four sets will be wired in parallel. So you may be wondering, why would you do them in series? Why would you do them in parallel? So in parallel um, gives you more advantages for shading. So panels that are in parallel, shading won't affect each one. Now in series, the opposite is true. If you shade one panel, it will essentially almost knock out the output of the other panel, 
which sounds terrible, so why would you ever wire them that way? Well, the reason is efficiency. So if you can get your volts up and there's just not as much sun, it'll the, the cloudy day on a system where the voltage is very high, it will still produce enough volts to charge a battery. And so that's why you would want the voltage to be up higher. So we thought a good compromise was two of them in series and four in parallel. Also, when we're driving and we have the two underneath, these underneath ones aren't gonna produce any current at all, just the top ones. And so it's important to have those sets on parallel strings so that the output of the bottom ones, which is essentially gonna be zero, doesn't knock out the output of the top ones. And so that's the way we've decided to wire them. So as the numbers work out, um, two of them in series will generate about 171.2 volts and still keep us at 6.43 amps because when you tie things in series it will um, double the voltage but the amps will remain the same very similar to a battery now since we have four of those put together our, our amps will jump from 6.43 which is for a single one so four times that is now 25.72 so all this is because I wanted to create a combiner box and so that combiner box has to be able to support 172.1 volts and 25.72 amps of total output and 6.43 amps of individual output per panel because the, the panels that are tied in series are going to look like one panel. So I was going to just make a combiner box. There are um, plenty of instructionals online on how to create your own combiner box. But when I started searching on Amazon, it really didn't make any sense because I could buy this really nice one in a IP67 weather rated box for just over $100. So, and the cool thing about this is this box comes all pre-wired and with solar inputs here. So the nice thing is, we will essentially have four strings because two of the strings are, two of the panels will be in series and those will form one string. So we'll use up all of these. So we'll have four strings coming in and these will tie all these in parallel. So these are fuses. So each one will go through a fuse. And so the fuses look like this. They're just little DC fuses. They're made for solar panels. So this whole thing is made for solar. And this is rated at, 12 amps. So the box and the instructions said 10 amps, but these come with 12 amp uh, fuses. So 10 amps is fine. We're really only pushing 6.43 max, so that's perfect. The total output for this whole box is supposed to be 40 amps, again, which is well above our expected output of about 25.72. So we should be perfectly fine. The other thing that this includes is a um, is a surge protector so and also a lightning suppressor. So anyway, um, we like I said we found this for like 120 bucks. I'll provide the link in the in the blog post and in the comments like I do below. Um, like we always do on all of these videos, we always provide a blog post that sort of details the parts and the pieces and adds text to some of this video stuff that we're doing. So we found this box and we thought, man, this is just about perfect for what we need. So we're gonna look at mounting this box up there, then two wires will come down and carry our 25.72 amps. And so for that, we've selected eight gauge wire. For making these, um, for making these panels, we've selected 10 gauge wire to go to the panel, which is a little bit of an overkill. They're, they're wired from the factory with 12 gauge, but we had 10 gauge, so that's what we went with. So it's all solar rated. It's all rated to be outside and in UV, and so it should be the right stuff. So for now, we're thinking about going with this box, and now the challenge is where are we going to put this box, how are we going to mount it, and how are we going to run our cables. So that's what we'll figure out next. All right, so co to connect this up, we had purchased this 8-gauge um, solar wire in black and in red. And they do come with MC4 connectors, but 
We're, this is the output, so this is our 8 gauge cable, so we are not going to use that. We're actually going to use these glands. And so our first step is to just remove these MC4 connectors because we are not going to use them and not going to need them. So um, they're mostly just going to get in the way. These are just going to, there we go, we're just going to attach um, in through here and then there's a clamp on the... Um, on the on the circuit breaker that will take these so we'll go ahead and strip these down and start connecting these um, just so we can see how we're going to run everything um, this wire is um, UV rated and it is a little stiff so um, we're a little bit spoiled because we usually use welding cable and so this wire is a little stiffer than we're used to so we're going to crimp this off we're going to put on um, ferrules which we try to use whenever we can um, and what the ferrules do is they hold the wire bundle together so that it doesn't splay out when you tighten something down on it so we've we've been using these whenever we could um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that So I couldn't strip with my normal strippers because this wire is so big. So um, it is kind of a heavy, just plasticky kind of wire. There we go. So into here, we'll see if this ferrule fits. Yep, fits well. ferrule on there. What's that one? <clears throat> It'd be a little big. There we go. Okay. So now we can run this in. So this will go to the positive side, which we can see is on this side. So we'll run it in right into there. And then we'll go in through the positive gland. So we're going to have to remove this. Put this through here. We'll run it under these guys. Oh man, that's stiff. I may need some needle nose. I'm gonna need some needle nose pliers to bend that in right. So I'm gonna pre-bend it. <laughs> I'm trying to bend it when I'm in there again. So I think this one's gotta come something like that. Push him through. And him up into his place. There he goes. a little bit and we'll clamp them down now I gotta straighten them out just a little bit okay. I'm happy with that in a little bit to give some strain relief. Okay. And these should help to hold it in place. So tighten these up. And so what these will do is these are weatherproof on this side too. So they'll as you squeeze them on there they compress around the cable and so they should make a weather tight seal. So there we go. So We've got the outputs wired, and 8 gauge is a little bit of an overkill for 25 amps, but we'd rather be on the safe side of that than on the other side. So, um, so these are the 8 gauge. We'll run these through a couple of glands that we have in the roof, and then we're going to try to position this box today and see if we can get this positioned.
All right, so we are up here. I'm on a ladder actually, because we are testing to see if we need to access this panel, so or this circuit breaker box, um, could I actually do it from the side of the bus if we were, say, on the road or something? Um, and I think this is pretty safe because I can get in here, I can see what's going on. This panel will have to be slid out because there'll be a solar panel on this slide. But this top one, it should clear out, so this top thing should clear in the hollow of that solar panel. So I think, I think we're going to position it right here. So these two are the two main outputs. They'll go down and into our box, and then all four of the PV connectors will connect on the insides of here. So I think this is where we're gonna position it. So to secure it down, we're looking at, um, we're probably gonna VHB it down and then coat the outside of the entire thing with a sealant so that no water can get in and start getting under the VHB and stuff. So. That's our plan for now. We'll see. We're going to try to make it work. So rather than trying to do this when it's down, which would be really hard because of the way the connectors stick out, we're trying to seal it before we put it down, and so then the sealant will just kind of squish out and create a seal all around this box is what our theory is. Hopefully this works out. It also means we only have one chance to really place it right, so um, it's gonna make that a little bit more difficult, but this should hopefully make it doable to create a good seal around it. All right, so we've got our combiner box installed. So we've installed that, now we're running the cabling, and we've ran it in and we put new uh, grommets or wire whatever these are called. We, put, we bought new ones and put them in and sealed and they're sealed correctly. So now we're looking at how to secure this wiring. And so what we think we're gonna do for the, at least this top portion until it goes up underneath is we're gonna use a turnabond to just keep it down on the roof. And for this part that shows, we're gonna do almost the whole thing except for this small curve. And then up here, we'll just do patches just to keep it down and keep it in place. So we don't really care too much about doing the whole thing, and this is rated to be outside, so it's UV rated, it should be fine. Um, so that's what we're working on now. So we've got a piece of, of uh, Eternabond cut, and we're about to lay it all down, and we're trying to measure everything, make sure this is exactly where we want it, and um, we'll lay it down. Remember, it's really sticky. Yeah. it doesn't stick to itself. Do you want to smash these wires together? <laughs> Are you trying to record? I'm trying to record and do this. <laughs> okay. All right, so we turn a bond down the wires. Um, so we put a nice big piece here, and then down here we just put pieces about every six to eight inches. And that's just to keep them from flapping around and stuff like that. So like I said, these are rated to be outside. They should be fine. Everything is watertight here going inside of the bus, so we should be pretty close. So all that we've left now for the wiring is um, to figure out the configuration on the panels, which is they're both going to face each other, hook those together, and then two wires are going to come out and come into this box here. So probably next week we'll tackle that project trying to get everything wired into our uh, PV combiner box. So it should be pretty exciting.